question, please raise your hand and we will call on you. Um, background movement for partnerships. All right, uh, I see Sam's hand first. So we'll, uh, we'll let you take it away, Sam. Hey, thanks, Coach. Uh, so my first question is, later tonight, we're going to get the uh, third round draw for the... I'm sorry, I didn't hear because we didn't have the, the volume up. So I didn't hear the first part of the of the question. Hmm. No worries. Uh, can you hear me fine now? No, I can. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Coach. Um, so tonight, we're going to get the, uh, the third round draw for the U.S. Open Cup. It'll be the first round that Charlotte FC plays in. Can you talk to... Uh, what the squad's uh, approaches to the Open Cup this year? Uh, we want to do we want to do well and to go as far as possible. Uh, I have a full uh, belief in the squad in everyone, and so I think it would be an opportunity for some players to play and to get some minutes. But uh, I want to play the most competitive squad that uh, that I can in every single match that we play. So the US. Open Cup that is not an exception to that. And then in in advance of uh, Real Salt Lake this weekend, can you give us any updates on um, injured or questionable players? Are we seeing any um, any progress, anybody who we might see on the starting 11 that we haven't seen in a while? So do you want me to give you the starting 11? That's the easy that, is, is that you no, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, but is but is is anybody um, is anybody who's been out um, in any uh, any way might be back? Yeah, it could be. Obviously, uh, we are still recovering our boys that they came from from injury and that they are making progress. Uh, at the same time, we had a full week with Carol. The last time came from international duty, and he only had the very last day of training so he's fully fit and available uh yeah i have a, a couple of doubts we have brand back from suspension as well so we have a couple of i have a couple of doubts uh, but uh we will see we will see how it goes and uh, the what i can say though is the full squad had a, a very good training week the boys were committed work with a lot of intensity and uh, they had in good spirit they were in a good spirit so whoever will go out on the pitch i think uh, at least will give uh, 100% for our for our club and i know that people will say this is the minimum but uh, if you know football sometimes it's not uh, it's not the minimum is uh, is something that you need to build so i think that the boys will be Whoever goes out will be really committed to to do well for 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 the club, for the supporters, for 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 everyone, for the team. All right, thank you, coach. Thank you, Sam. Right. Good luck. Carol, are you there? I didn't hear you. Sorry about that. No <laughs> um, hey, good morning, Christian. Good morning, Carol. Um. Christian Kalina was back working with the goalies. Does that mean he's getting close to being able to scrimmage and do that, you know, kind of full strength kind of things? Yeah, yeah, he's getting closer. He's getting closer to to that uh, to that moment of being back uh, in the team. But for now, we still there are still some procedure to follow because uh, not just for Christian, but for everybody that is coming from injury, we want them, when they come back, we want them to come back and stay fit. It's not just rushing people back. Um, so, but it was uh, it was great to see Christian be given the, the green light from the surgeon, from the medical department, and now he's fully recovering uh, and is fully training with with us and uh, and it's uh, a great uh, addition obviously to have because of his ability but also because of his experience so the moment of him uh, being back is uh, is getting closer right also i wanted to revisit uh, camille score you know having the assist in the in the goal mm -hmm. last week and just uh, wondered you know in your conversations with him over yeah. the last year you know, do you encourage him? Just don't don't worry about the goals. Just focus on, 
you know, what you're trying to accomplish and they'll come. Um, yeah, uh, I think, as I said many times, we have to focus on the on the performance rather than the result, because the result, uh, sometimes you cannot control that. So you try to control things that you cannot control that generate stress and uh, a waste of energy in the things that instead you can control these individually and uh, collectively so for for Camille is the same I thought Camille was very close to score goals last season he was very close in Houston he was very close in many other games uh, this season as well against New England so we had uh, the possibility of uh, of seeing him on the score sheet few times he was asked this man last year in some of our best uh, performances i remember obviously the philadelphia one was uh, was obviously the everybody that uh, was talking about danny that was great for 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 us but i think he was a close contender for man of the match uh, camille by you know making assist uh, creating penalties and the pressing from the front and so he knows he has my trust as a player, uh, but uh, in the end, uh, for as much as I like uh, and I love every player, in the end is the, they have to do it on the pitch. And so there might be a rotation because if they don't do it, uh, then somebody else has to come and take their place and they have to be challenged like uh, in every walk of life, you know. It's not just unique of football, it's in every walk of life uh, there is competition and you need to show that you are up to the to the job but i think that camille has been i understand why he has been uh, you know criticized because of the numbers but i thought that his contribution was always tangible in the team and uh, i'm glad that uh, we start to see the numbers as well and uh, even in preseason he came out with uh, with goals he scored in preseason he he created chances he made assists and I think that Camille is uh, is working really hard, and then in the end, you know, hard work and quality pays off. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, Alejandro. Hello, nice to meet you, Coach. Nice to meet you. Alejandro. What's about what's about the situation of Guzman Corujo? When could he return to the competition? Yeah. Uh, also, Guzman is another one that is. Uh, that is uh, getting closer and closer. He's training with us and he starts to do not everything in the training because there is, as I said to Carol before, there are procedures in place that we don't want you know, to fall on the last hurdle. Mm -hmm. He has done so well to get himself where he is, fully fit and, uh, uh, and uh, with his uh, knee that is, uh, he feels just uh, as good as before. But now we have to be careful that the last uh, that we take care of him on a daily basis. Now you know he, he went for the for the green card, so I think this is uh, this is also another good thing and positive thing for the club to have uh, a player like Guzman also on a domestic uh, contract and or position, let's say. And so we are um, we are looking forward to having him back because. Again, his ability, like Christian Kalina, his ability, his experience, what he brings to the table. And, you know, for the, for our team to do what we have done, for the young guys uh, or the less experienced guys, and we had out three of the most uh, experienced players, four considering Carol that he was on international duty without uh, Kale, Kalina, without uh, Guzman, without Wesley, um, uh, sorry, Ashley Westwood. So... I think that uh, we have to we have to think that we have got three important players coming back, and uh, we are looking forward to that. Without obviously uh, taking away anything from the young players, but I think that it would be the first one to welcome these guys because this guy brings something more to the table. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we'll move on to Brian. Hey, Christian. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning, Brian. So uh, with uh, Real Salt Lake this weekend, your opponent, uh, they've kind of had a, a rough stretch of form, lot losing four in a row and then falling 4-0 uh, in their last two matches. Mm. Um, but obviously in MLS, especially on the road, there's always a lot of parity and a lot of variance that can happen week to week, regardless of form. Um, how do you keep... Um, or in, is it potentially an issue of, of, of overconfidence in the squad when you 
come up against a team that on paper is kind of underperforming is that is that ever an issue that comes up and if it is how do you how do you deal with kind of keeping the players even keel and focus on just it being another week no no uh, this obviously can happen consciously unconsciously but uh That's why, but you can have the, also the opposite uh, situation where you go and play against a team that won, I don't know, six in a row and the last two by four nil. So what do you do? You go with the less confidence then. So I think that our approach is to go with the same uh, with the same spirit. We have to obviously know about the opposition and there's uh, always we do scouting of the opposition with the ball, without the ball, in set pieces, everything that we can find the patterns that they do. I think that this is a team that has a lot of very good players. It can happen sometimes that you slip to a couple of results that uh, don't go your way or and then uh, but uh, every game give a new opportunity, you know, to everybody and I think that they have again very good players and a good coach that knows them really well. And so we need to prepare to have a to play a really strong game from our part, but that's what we want to do wherever we go, home or away, uh, to be truthful and, uh, uh, you know, to our to our identity of that we are trying to establish here, to play attacking game, to be intense, to have energy, and uh, not to worry too much about the state of form of the opposition, but... Uh, knowing what are the characteristics of the opponents, but at the same time, we really focus on our game. And then uh, just uh, so while RSL's um, attack hasn't really been clicking, uh, Justin Glad, their center back, has been pretty dangerous on set pieces so far this yeah. year, only scoring a couple of goals. And yeah. I feel like that was one area that at least uh, Charlotte looked a little bit nervy at times, especially last, last week against Toronto. Obviously, the wind played a factor in that game as well. But how do you, uh, how do you approach... Uh, the stopping stopping a player like that who's been uh, physical in the box and, and being able to put goals in the in the net on, on corner kicks and set pieces like that. Listen, is Brian, it's very difficult. I have a little bit of experience and uh, I can tell you that uh, we work really hard and really uh, methodically on set pieces on a weekly basis. Then after you come across the the basic which you have a guy that delivers the ball really well which is the main thing because is you can can be as good as you want at attack is as busy but if the ball is not delivered in the best possible way it's, it's tough right so the first thing to know this is what the deliverer so last last uh, game for example you play against Bernardeschi they used to deliver corners and free kicks for Juventus in Champions League so you know that it's going to be a quality the ball is going to become it's going to come to the box uh, with you know with uh, uh really really dangerous plus the wind played the part and he was clever he's an experienced player and also they have guys that can attack the ball well so the same for salt lake and the same for every team so we need to be uh able to face the challenge and obviously we want to pose the same kind of threat to the opposition and there are moments in which you can see two or three and it looks like disaster but i can assure you that sometimes Uh, in my experience in the in as a coach or as assistant coach, sometimes when you work the most on set pieces, you concede for whatever reason it is. You know, sometimes it's a, a bad luck or you find guys that they are exceptionally good at that. And other times that you work a little bit less, you don't consider for 20 games in a row. Having the same structure, having the same information, having exactly the same uh, work done on the pitch. So... I'm not saying that they hit and miss, but uh, I can tell you that there is that can be small, really small detail in this situation can make a big difference. But one thing I can assure you is that we work really hard on the video sessions and on the pitch to to work uh, to work on set pieces defensively and offensively. Uh, my last question is uh, specifically about Kerwin Vargas and Jalen Lindsay, uh, two young players who have found their way back into the starting 11. Um, that's sort of a, a, an aspect of, uh, of the philosophy, both since you've been a head coach at Charlotte and maybe back when you were working with Patrick Vieira and just turn in terms of having like an open door policy for these young players and just players in general to when they lose out on, on minutes or in the starting position to earn those minutes back and reclaim those spots. And, and, and you feel like that's an aspect of, 
what has sort of brought about this resurgence for players like Kerwin Vargas and Jalen Lindsay so far this year? Yeah, and I would add Ben Bender to that because yeah. also Ben wasn't starting a game for a while. But uh, yeah, um, first of all, I, I've always liked to work with the young players, but for, with all the players, but with young players, especially because it's also part of my background that I can see with the with the the years behind me, I can see how they can develop, and I know that you know people only see uh, the finished article, but in the end, uh, there are certain characteristics that you have to look. And over the years, uh, I think I by default I developed that kind of uh, you know eye to see whether a player can can go forward. In the case of Kerwin, Jalen, Ben, but also Chris Eggert and more that we have here. I think that we are we have some uh, very good young players that they need obviously a little bit of experience. But in the end, when you play in MLS or when you play in any major league, you need to uh, to deliver. You need to be able to. It's not it's not good to say well he's a young player, but then if he becomes a liability, then this is no good uh, either for them, for the team, and for for the club. So. If uh, we play those guys, it's because we believe that they can, they can add to to the party, and I think that they can really bring something to the table. It's uh, to be to have patience and to accept that they can make one or two mistakes. That obviously, that hopefully they are not too costly. But what I want is competition in every position. And then if uh, you know, I don't see that certain players bring what uh, the team requires, then uh, somebody else will get an opportunity. But that doesn't mean that the other guys are forgotten or gone. It just means that it's just a natural rotation that now somebody else that is working equally hard in training will get the, the minutes. And then if they take the opportunities for the other guy that was starting to to wait and to earn his, uh, his um, position back, I think this is quite healthy in a squad. Thank you, Christian. Have a, a good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Bray. Right, we'll move on to Alex. Hey, Christian. I just got one for you this week. Um, a lot has been made about uh, Charlotte FC's home fans and its home environment being so good for the team and stuff like this. But I'm curious, like, from do you think that at times the team can find itself and the team can come together more? When it's when it goes on the road, especially early on in the season, to truly find like what it is y'all's identity and stuff like this. Well, I don't know. I mean, if that happens, it's uh, certainly something that we welcome because uh, last season it seems to be the opposite. So you see, uh, I think that to go away in every major league is difficult because it's difficult. It's a different. It's a different challenge. Let's say. And uh, and in this country more because of the dimension of the country. So I always said by my time also working with New York City that this is a, a national uh, competition played on a continental level. So it's quite unique or is unique, maybe not unique in the sense that you have big countries also like Brazil, like Australia, that also I believe that they you have to travel a lot in terms of distance, but in the US, because of the number of clubs and uh, uh, and the distance is, is not easy. So to find ourselves also on the road, I think, it, first of all, is a, is a step forward for our club. And now we have to make sure that we do that at home. So it's up to us to find this balance that we don't depend too much on, uh, you know, to our supporters, or to away conditions. We have to find a balance that wherever we go, we know that it's our responsibility to play our game. And at the same time, if we play at home, to get our supporters going. We don't want to be dependent on our, of our supporters. We always welcome their support because for us, it's, uh, it is something that we really appreciate and we are so grateful and thankful. But at the same time, we know that the responsibility is for us to get the party going, not to be waiting for the supporters to, to start the party. It's our responsibility to make them feel the fire on the pitch. Makes sense. Thanks, Christian. Thank you. All right, we'll do uh, two more. Let's go Steve and then end with Mike. 
Hi, Christian. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just following up on what Alec was uh, mentioning there, when you look at the season as a whole and you're preparing in advance, do you look like through the schedule, do you target a certain number of points that you want to get on the road as a minimum in order to make the playoff cut line or better? Yeah, but to a certain degree. But uh, I like to, I like to take game by game, and we want to really to try to win every game or to try to give our best shot to every game. So in that sense, I don't, uh, you know, I don't write off or uh, just focus all all in in one game and certain games maybe to go, you know. A little bit lighter, so to speak. I think that we want to play every game. Every game is important. Every game has to be. I know it sounds as a cliche, but has to be played as a final in the sense that every game for us is very, very important. When you go on the road, you make such a big journey, and you want to come back with something because you know you travel. It's a long travel. Is it's. Uh, time that you are away from your family from your friends from you know from your familiar environment so you want to come back with something and when you play at home obviously you want to give the best uh, to your supporters to your uh, fan base and uh, so every game really is very important so i don't make so many calculation on you know on this one we need one point on this one we need three on this one even if we look no i think every game for us is is very, very important. And I think that we have to build a strong mentality like that. Yeah, and perhaps that's something that maybe happens as the season evolves and you kind of see where you need to be. Right now, it's still wide open. On yeah, it's very early. It's very early at the same time. We need to establish, again, our identity, you know, to be more and more comfortable with the way we play. Uh, and so I think it's we need to go and to go strong in every game we go. And and that segues uh, to my last question was the return trip after the Toronto game and, and you know, playing against the, you know, you know, Toronto playing against the weather mm -hmm. um, and things like that. What was the attitude in the locker room and on the, the plane on the way home? Did the players um, feel was was it what was the balance between achievement having come back to you know earn a point in that game and or disappointment in not having done more, given the chances. A, a little bit, a little bit of both, but ultimately, we all remember the change, the change room last year, and uh, how difficult it was. Uh, it was uh, one of the most difficult moments for me as a head coach, uh, because the result, or because we went with uh, with hopes, and uh, we gave away really silly and lucky goals very early in the game where they were uh, celebrating the first start of Insigne Bernardeschi and you know for them it was the perfect day for us it was uh, something that uh, a game to forget even though I don't think we played badly but uh, in the key episodes they were clearly a lot more they had more guile than us more luck uh, everything went so I remember the change room and this year, I when I mentioned that, uh, they, were, they were laughing after the game because they also remember well what happened in the changing room after the game. And uh, for us to come back 2-0 down uh, to 2-2, two -two, but there was belief also half time. And because uh, we created chances and we knew we would have played with the wind behind our back. Because I, I would say that the, the, the weather conditions, they were there against us, but also against Toronto is the same, right? So... It's not that we play with one weather and, and Toronto play with a different one. But I thought that our boys went on the pitch with a lot of belief and there was also a little bit of disappointment. But that tells you uh, what kind of step forward the guys are making if they go away from Toronto with a draw when we were tunneled down and feeling a little bit disappointed. So that tells you what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, progress the boys are making. So little by little, one step at a time, but I feel that the boys are, are going in the right direction. So was it on the plane, I mean, in post-game... Uh, you were really want to run on the plane, they were tired. They were sleeping, most of them, you know. <laughs> so there yeah, was... That's exactly what I was going to ask. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, lastly, Mike. 
Good morning, Christian. Good to see you Good again. Morning, sir. Yes. Uh, you know, we we haven't talked much about it in recent weeks because the season is going on. But, mm -hmm. you know, everybody knows what happened in, in training camp and, you know, the preseason and, and the tragedy and obviously how that sets you guys back. Mm -hmm. In the last three weeks, you picked up points with a win and two draws after the on three start. I know it's a long way to get there, but are you noticing now six games in that the guys are playing your game model more instinctively rather than thinking it through and knowing what, I mean, is it becoming second nature to them now that it seems like you guys are kind of rolling a little bit? Yeah. And uh, this is natural in a way. And I would like that they are playing our style, you know, game model. It's not just mine. I hope that they are convinced because when I talk to them, they enjoy to play this uh this way to have the ball and to try to be aggressive and not always you can be aggressive all game and not always you can be dominant all game because you have to take into consideration the opposition the strength of the opposition the organization of the opposition but uh, they really try hard to do that and wherever they go home or away they give teams uh, a strong game even I felt even at the beginning of season when we the results didn't go our way and we were quite unlucky in certain situations, but you have to take it on the chin, move on. And this is, again, this is still a time where we need to keep the hour head down and working and not talking too much. But obviously with time, with training, with them taking more ownership and commitment, the to play our game model become more and more uh, natural and then this is what we want. We want to focus on that. You know, we want to focus on that and to execute at a higher speed. Because when you execute at high intensities with quality, it's difficult for the opposition, even if they know what we are going to do. But uh, it is a challenge. It's a challenge for for us to do it and the, for the opposition to stop it. Kind of going off of the last three weeks, it's you know you've gotten points in the last three games. Are you noticing that around the club that there's a sense that maybe some momentum is starting to build, and this is something that is is sustainable over the next over the next long stretch? Yeah, obviously with the result uh, we get uh, more and more. Uh, it's natural, right? Is is natural that with the result come confidence, but at the same time, I don't want this to be exactly you know the the thing that uh, get us going or get us down we need to focus on res uh, on yeah on the results of course that goes without saying but on performance because if you play well and if you play with intensity and you keep the belief long term you're going to be okay it's i don't want uh, our confidence to be linked too much to the result to a certain degree is inevitable to that those two things go hand in hand, but at the same time, I want us to feel that there is a kind of distance between the result and the performance in the sense that uh, we have to be mentally and strong to keep believing in what we do, uh, even if the result in certain situations doesn't go our way, provided that we play a strong game, provided that we had chances provided that we had a very good performance individually and collectively. And uh, I'd be failing my teacher if I didn't deliver my homework. So uh, <laughs> who, was the best, who was the best James Bond? Among the players or in the one that they, or in the, or in the movie? Who, who, what actor was the be portrayed the best James Bond? You know, given my, I, I know that Carol is uh, now looking at me and uh, I feel the pressure. You feel the pressure for me, I feel the pressure from Carol, but uh, the, the Sean Connery. Because? <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> for me, this, is the, this was the best one. But what, what set him apart from the other? I don't know, maybe his elegance, his way of. Uh, of interpreting and uh, the James Bond, and I guess that the interpretation is always be, depends on the historical moment that you live. So I thought I really like you know the the 60s, 70s, early 70s feel, and so because of that, that is the one that I enjoy the most.
and the most handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Best James Bond movie is You Only Live Twice Anyway. And he's the lead in that. So, <laughs> Mike, I know you weren't asking for my opinion, but I just wanted to. I, you know, well, I'll take them all. I'll take them all. I think, I think we're creating a new segment on the show called At the Movies with Christian Latanzio. Yeah, we are quite unique in that, aren't we? Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Thank Thank you guys. I'll see you on uh, Saturday to the uh, Apple guys on